Hi, everybody. Well, I'm wondering. I'm wondering when the bubble, shall we say, for cruising is going to burst. So what do I mean by that? Well, cruising right now is at an all time high. More people are cruising, more ships are available, more brand new ships coming online, bigger and better ships, new itineraries. But what's also gone along with that is the cost. The price of cruising right now is basically gone through the roof, like everything else in life, right? Go to the grocery store, see how much your groceries are compared to what they were two years ago. Check out the cost of homes nowadays compared to what they were two years ago. Everything's gone up probably except your salary and your income. But um, cruising in particular, cruising was the alternative, right? It was the alternative to say all inclusives and resort travel where you could get everything included. Uh, like free food on board, your, you know, entertainment, your cabin, all included in the one price. You could get out there at a relatively inexpensive trip and see the world, visit, visit lots of areas. But I recently attended a seminar from a, a couple of cruise lines and did some training recently online as well for other cruise lines. And one of the all time topics that other travel agents are now talking about is just how pricey cruises are. And I noticed it crazily right now because we just did a group cruise on the Majestic Princess seven day out of Seattle this year, just a month ago. And I know what everyone paid for that cruise. Well, the exact same cruise next year on a slightly older ship, still seven day, still leaving from Seattle, is up like 35, 40% of what it was this year. Now, does that mean the price won't go down? No, the price may go down. If so, of course, everyone who's in that group will be repaired to the lower price. That's my job. That's what I'm supposed to do. However, the starting price is way, way up there compared to what the starting price was this year. I'm also seeing online on our travel agent website, other agents who are new to the business going, hey, I, I, I don't normally sell cruises, but um, I know Alaska's popular, but is it really that popular that there's like nothing available? <laughs> People are looking for August, September of this year. And they're saying, well, sure, you can have this inside cabin on this one particular ship. And that's basically it. Or this one balcony at guaranteed cabin at the front. You, your availability is like next to nothing this year. And that goes for a lot of cruises. That goes for a lot of sailings out there, not just in Alaska, but as in particular, Alaska. And now with Alaska saying that they want to set limits to cruise ships and itinerary changes, if the cruise lines are thinking, well, normally we send seven or eight ships to Alaska and with this cutback, maybe we're only going to sell six. That means the availability of ships in Alaska is less, which means more people will want to get on those less amount of ships, which means we can charge more. And that's exactly what they're doing. They are charging huge, huge prices, like through the roof prices. I've never known a cruise ship that an interior guaranteed cabin in November is going to cost me over $5,000. And that's without drink packages. That's without my insurance. That's without getting there. That's without any hotel fees. That's without anything else. No specialty dining, no excursions, no nothing. That's just a seven night cruise on the icon right now in November. Interior guaranteed cabin for two people over $5,000. Wow. 
Wow, that used to be a mini suite. It used to be a mini suite on these cruises just two years ago. That's how pricey cruising has gotten so far. And it begs the question, how long till that bubble bursts? When people just go, ah, nope, uh, that's enough. I can't afford it anymore. I, I'm doing it now in my own personal travels. I'm looking at cruises and going, I would love to do that. I would love to go and do that, but I'm not paying a thousand dollars or more a day to get on that cruise ship. If you know what I mean. Uh, I recently priced the three day cruise on the Utopia, the opening day. Canadian dollars balcony for myself in Canada was $1,300 a day. That's right. $1,300 a day for a three-day cruise. Too expensive for me. I'm not going to do it. Especially a three-day cruise flying from Canada. That's not worth it. That's not a quick getaway. Now, if I lived in the Orlando area where this cruise ship is, that makes a big difference. No hotel fee, no airfare, etc. That makes a difference. Maybe I would want to get on the new ship to check it out and see the exciting new things that they have to offer. The new shows, etc. But wow, it definitely... Like normally I would go down and do that, but I'm not, you know, and be willing to pay a little more, a little more for a brand new ship on launch day. But that kind of pricing, are you, are you kidding me? No, uh, and I, I know so many people out there are feeling that pinch as well. And they're starting to rethink their trip holidays. And they're starting to rethink, well, I normally go on a balcony, now maybe I'm going to go in an interior, where it used to be the other way around. People would have normally be in an interior and say, you know what, it's only this much more for a balcony. Well, <laughs> if an interior is costing you over $5,000, then that balcony is going to cost you seven to $8,000, and that is a big difference these days. So yeah, we always see bubbles burst, right? The high-tech bubble burst, the uh, you know, gas prices burst at one point when they were so high and then they went way down with the oil crisis. All kinds of things can happen and industries get to that one point where all of a sudden people start saying, nope, it's no longer an economic value, it's no longer worth the money to do this kind of travel and they start looking at alternative travel and then they, they stop even thinking about the original form that they have been avoiding now. If they start, oh, you know what? At the price of cruising right now, I can do a luxury trip to Australia or I can do a luxury safari in Africa for the exact same price. Why would I not do that? That's a more exotic trip to me than seven days going to Nassau, right? So. People are now looking at alternatives. And I'm just, I'm wondering when, oh when, will this pricing bubble burst? And how will the cruise lines compensate? Will they drop the prices? Will people come back? Will people just start thinking, no, cruising is no longer in my category. And now I'm gonna choose a different type of vacation. That would be a shame.